Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zachua. I hope everybody's having a great day, and I hope everybody's enjoying their Shabbat today. We're going to get into a great topic. We're talking about pride and humility. And, of course, this definitely is a prevalent conversation to be had in these times and what's going on right now in the world. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I want to talk about walking and talking in humility. It's a big topic for the men, and it's especially a big topic for the women. Because the prophecies of the women and the things that's going to happen toward especially the daughters of Zion at the end of the world, our women need humility. Because the whole world is trying to get our women to lift themselves up. Well, I was going to start in Psalm 55 and 22. But I know a lot of people know this verse in the New Testament. When Yadche actually spoke on it. But they don't actually know where the verse actually came from. Uh, Psalm 55 and 22 says, Cast thy burdens upon the highest, and he shall sustain me. And he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So a lot of people don't know that the, the verse of Matthew 11 actually came from Psalms. Because of Elohim in the first place. So, none, nonetheless, Kyle said, you want to add anything after I'm going? You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Cast thy burdens upon Ahia, he shall sustain me. It sounds very, very vague. <laughs> Just reading it. And people would be like, okay, well, casting your burdens, what is casting your burden? Right? Well, casting your burden is anything that hinders you from being what Allah wants you to be. So that would be a burden to you, and it would be a burden to Allah because it's a hindrance. And today we're talking about pride and humility. So this is the burden we're referring to today. All right? Now I'm going to read the scripture in Matthew 11 so that everybody can understand the verse that I'm correlating it to. Matthew 11 and 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now that was something very key. When Yahweh said in verse 29, he says, For I am meek and lowly in heart. I want everybody to focus on the lowly in heart today. Because a lot of times, we feel that surge of energy or whatever it is that you that you can correlate it to. You feel it when you're speaking. You feel it when you're acting or when you're, when you're in motion or when you're doing something. You feel that, right? And a lot of times, that, that surge is what leads us to pride. Because we're supposed to be lowly in heart. So we're supposed to not be moving with such energy when we're talking or when we're or when we're doing something. In that regard, we're supposed to actually be very, very humble, very, very lowly. Even when we're talking or we're explaining something to somebody, or we're explaining or we're giving a testimony, or we're having a conversation. Yeah, it's great to get excited. But at the same time, you have to guard yourself because pride can enter in. And this is what we're having in the conversation about. It's actually being able to know and recognize when these things are happening.
Hey, everybody understand so far, Costa? You understand? Or do I need the lap? I understand. All right. Now, if a person desires wisdom, right? If a person desires the Holy Spirit. Right? You can't have pride, right? The Sarah 15 and 8 says, For she is far from pride. The men that are liars cannot remember her. So this is very important. Operating in pride keeps you from obtaining the Holy Spirit. So I would say that this is very important. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody. But I would say that this is very important. If pride can hinder you from obtaining <laughs> the eternal glory, I would say that this is something that people really need to pay attention to. So if pride can stop you from getting wisdom, right? Why? Why? Why is pride so important to, to be rid of in, in order to obtain her? Anybody know the answer? Because pride is the beginning of when one departs from Alahayim. So why? Why does a person depart from Alahayim with pride? Um, I don't know. Why is pride? Why would pride make a person depart from Alahayim? And why wouldn't it be anything else that makes a person depart from Alahaya? Why is it pride? I got another answer. <laughs> because only by pride comes contention, and the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell with strife. Right. Well, that, that's Proverbs 13 and 10, right? Yeah. Oh, you know I'm studying. <laughs> you, I know you are. I know you, you know are. This is my SAT, right? <laughs> <laughs> but only by pride comes contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. Yes, that is partial. That's partial of it. That's partial of why pride keeps you away from the Holy Spirit. And that's partial of why pride is the beginning of are pretty much rebelling from Alahai. But what does pride do? Pride carries you to do okay. what's right in your own mind. Pride, pride it. goes along with self will, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So if you're doing what you desire to do, and you also do the will of Alahai? No, it's not possible. Unless your will is to do Allah Himself. Well, then I wouldn't be self will. Right. <laughs> so I hope, I hope everybody is paying attention that when you have a fix of self will, or when you're operating in self will, you can't be operating in the spirit of Allah I am at the same time. Because they're contrary. So, if a person, and we're going to get into walking and talking in the spirit of humility, we're going to get into that, but right now, we're, going to, we're right here with pride. So, if you're walking in pride, first off, you're going to be contentious. So, so pride is going to be in the midst whenever there's not peace. Whenever there's not peace, or whenever there's strife, or, or something going on where people can't get along, there's pride in the midst of it. Also, there's pride in the midst of self-will when a person is doing their own will and they can't adhere to the will of Allah because their own desires are more important than Allah desires. Right? So everybody's there, right? Yes, I'm there. With you. All right? Now, we're going to keep on going, right? We're going to build on this so that we can get a full understanding of what's going on with pride and 
the dichotomy of humility, right? We're in vision three, right? Vision three of Shepherd of Hermes. It says, and I see the aged woman in a vision of the night saying to me, every inquiry needs humility. Fast therefore, and thou shalt receive what thou askest from a higher. Every inquiry needs humility. So this is important, right? I, I just want everybody to understand the importance of this dialogue because if you are operating in pride and if you have pride in you and you're praying, your prayers are being hindered because of your pride. That's very dangerous. Every inquiry needs humility. And this is something that we all need to work on. I know that everybody is working. Everybody's going at a good pace. The pace that our hand is set for everybody. But I want everybody to understand the importance of what you're working towards. Because of that pride, it's hindering your prayer. That pride is also making you contentious for other people where you can't be at peace and harmony. That pride is also hindering you from receiving the Holy Spirit. And that pride is leaving you away from our highness. Sounds very dangerous. Doesn't sound like something I would want to do. So I would definitely put a lot of energy into understanding and looking within myself and weeding out that pride. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to go through and we're going to find all the pieces of pride so that everybody can be aware of it. Right. I can't say we're going to go through all the pieces of pride. I'm just going to go through a couple of scriptures. This is going to be a long, drawn out thing. So let me, let me, <laughs> let me correct myself. <laughs> uh, parable 8 of Shepherd of Hermes, right? Life is for all those that keep the commandments of the highest. But in the commandments, there is nothing about first places or about glory of any kind but about long suffering and humility in man. And such men, therefore, is the life of a higher. But infectious and lawless men is death. I'm going to read that again, okay? So that everybody can catch it, and I'm going to slow it down. But there was a lot of stuff in there. Life is for all those that keep the commandments of a higher. But in the commandments, there is nothing about first places or about glory of any kind, but about long suffering and humility in man. And such men, therefore, is the life of a higher. But in fascist and lawless men, it's death. I don't know if anybody's tying the pieces, right? It says, I'm going I'm to jump it in, but infectious and lawless men is death, right? Now, we just went into being contentious and what causes a man to be contentious, right? Which is pride, right? Right. So, if you're operating factiously, right? You're operating in pride. Right. I saw both of them. You said you saw both of them? Yes, sir. The factions come from strife because through pride come contention. And then through self-will comes lawlessness. Because we do what we want to do instead of the will of Allah. Pride. Pride takes away from life. The life of Allah isn't in it. And we, we hear it all the time. We hear people talk about, I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit. 
And and we know five times out of ten, the person that says that is the same person that's doing what they want to do. Right. Unfortunately. We have to be more than men pleasers, and we have to be more than saying things with our lips and being hypocrites. We have to actually want to walk, and we actually have to want to talk it, and we actually have to want it to be in our hearts. The heart is an interesting thing. Heart is very interesting because the heart tells no tale. The heart is always going to tell the truth. Whether or not the truth comes out of a person looks or not, the heart is always, always accurate. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. So, there's no hiding. There's no hiding in this world. You can't hide and make it seem one way and it's not. Because it's going to come out. The heart is very, very... What's the word? Transparent? The heart is very transparent. It's see-through. Jumping back into Parable 8. Right? For in Parable 8 of Thomas, uh 7 and 6. Life is for all those that keep the commandments of a higher. Life is for all those that keep the commandments of a higher. Right? Because you actually get to live. You're living in Him. He's living in you. You actually get to experience true life without being burdened by the, the, the distractions and the weight of this world. Because you cast it upon him as, as Psalms and as Matthew and Tester, right? But in the commandments, there is nothing about first places. So it's not about who comes in first. It's not a race. It's not a race between us to who gets there first. Because the parable also talks about the man who Allah gave the shepherds. And one man received his shekels, and then another man received his shekel later. Could the man who received his shekel and, and made his agreement with Allah Hayyam be upset because another man made an agreement later and he got his reward as well? No. Everybody receives what Allah Hayyam has given unto them, and you have to be content with it. And you have to be complacent. It's not a race. It's not a battle. We're all working to the same goal in Yacha. Exactly what Paul said. We're working to get there together. Or about glory of any kind. It's not about glory. It's not about how much you know or how well you're doing to glory in that. Or what you found out or, or what revelation came to you. If you want to help somebody and it's on topic, do it in humility. Speak about it in humility and help them. But it's not about Allah Hayim showed me this, Allah Hayim showed me that, all oh, this, and, and, and glorying in yourself because that's your glory. Allah Hayim didn't go tell nobody what he did for you. You're telling people what Allah Hayim did for you. That's not his glory. And I hope everybody understands that. That you're not glorifying Allah Hayim. Your testimonies, unless it's on topic or it's needful for that situation to help somebody, your testimony is for your own glory. And if Allah wanted somebody to know what he did for you, he would do it in the midst of everybody. But what is it about? It's about long suffering. Being long suffering with one another. As Allah is long suffering with us. 
having compassion, mercy, and humility in men. It's about humility. It's about being lowly in heart. Looking after our brother as ourselves. Loving people. Helping people. Being humble on our own heart, in our own mind. Speaking in humility. Walking in humility. Being ready with a soft answer to turn away wrath. Now, as I'm saying all this, we have to pick a side, right? There's always a choice. There's always a choice in everything. Proverbs 16 and 19 says, Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the pride. Which one do you want? Every man has to make a decision. Every man has to make a choice of what they want and what they desire. If you desire this walk, put forth your whole heart in it. If you don't desire this walk, I'll have mercy upon you. But if you're here and this is what you want, put forth everything you got. Why would you have step in something that is so important? So what is the goal? Right? Matthew 18 and 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We have to humble ourselves as children. That means that we listen well. We're not lifted up in pride, ready to give an answer. We're listening. We're learning. We're as students. We're as children. Good children don't lift themselves up to tell you what they think. They're here to learn. They're here to grow. And we are supposed to be the same way. We're supposed to be here to learn, here to grow. Not trying to say what we know or how we feel we're right. And I say this because a lot of times Allah is trying to lead us and we're rebellious. We, we're, we're standing in what we know or what we learn. Well, Al Haim is trying to teach us a different way. And we're causing ourselves to err. We're causing ourselves to, to lack. We're causing ourselves to fall back or to be complacent and not growing in whatever area it is. We do it to ourselves. We have to grow out of that. And it's interesting and growing out of something, we're growing back into something. <laughs> we have to grow back into being children, being open-minded, not being so um, stubborn upon what we think we know, upon what we learn or that may have worked for us in the world that may not work for us in this walk. Now, with all being said, we have to go into the evidence. Some of the evidences of pride through the scriptures, right? Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Allah. Allah is not in all his thoughts. By countenance. By countenance tells us whether or not we're in pride in the first place.
Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. <laughs> so before you even open your mouth, before you even do anything, it's already evident when you're in pride. If somebody that knows pride or if Alahim is looking upon you, it's already evident. Why is that? How can a person tell through your countenance that you're operating in pride? Anybody know? You know I like to pull y'all in. I just don't want to be up here talking. Because it's this, my guess. Because it's a work of the flesh, everything has a sign, everything has a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit. So your face will show it. Your face? Your body language, your posture. This is the entity that goes with it, showing itself, actually. Yeah. So that entity operates in you. So whether it be your stance or your posture, whether it be your face, whether it be your demeanor, pride shows. Even before you even make a word. Even before you make that prideful laugh or you speak in high mindedness where you're kind of speaking down to other people or you're lifting yourself up with whatever story you're telling as if you have some understanding further than someone else. Pride is already there. It says, Allah is not in all his thoughts. So based off his countenance, solely your countenance, Allah says that Allah is not in all his thoughts. Why is that? Why is Allah not in all his thoughts based off his countenance? Because he had to hop into an idol to get to that place. <laughs> Man, you're the only nobody else there, man. No, my bad. <laughs> I'm here learning. I'm here sitting here learning how to class myself, man. I'm here learning how it goes. Right? Because the first commandment is what? Thou shalt have no Elohim before I hire, right? Yes, that's correct. If you're hearkening to an idol, what have you done? <laughs> Transgress the first commandment. Right? So, if Allah did not deny your thoughts, that means that somebody else is in your thoughts. Gotta watch out. It's that simple. It's that quick. Look how quick that is. You have that one moment when your countenance changes from being humble in humility to hearkening to an idol that fast and your countenance changes. It can happen in a split second. So we need to have Allah in all our thoughts. Always thinking upon Allah What will Allah do? What is the right thing to do in this situation? What's the right way to feel? When something has happened to you, or when somebody has said something to you, what's the right way to feel? How would Allah feel? Because your feelings lead to confidence change. That's how you know it's more than just hearkening with your ears. It's the way you feel. An evil spirit can cause you to change the way you feel. And that's hearkening as well. Because that entity shouldn't have dominion over you to cause you to change. 
your counselor. I hope everybody is understanding. Psalm 59 and 12. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. Hold up. Everybody hear that? Psalm 59 and 12. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. I don't know if everybody understands that, Kasi. Kasi, you want to explain this one? Go ahead, preacher. I'm backing away right now, man. I've been on the road. (laughs) (laughs) For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. As we've learned thus far, we are ready fell by listening to the spirit of pride to think evilly and our lives are not in all our thoughts and then that spirit will show itself in our countenance and it's that quick where we're under the dominion of an idol and then when we get to the point of speaking the words that the idol desires to be spoken we pour out abominations as the precept said and all that sin and by the time it gets to our mouth we've completed it and then that's going to get us taken because right 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 I don't know if you caught this topic you're taking over already right because I'm not not your thoughts so the evil spirit has already placed that seed in you right your countenance changes right and then as soon as you go to make an action, right? As soon as you go to operate, you're taken over. So by the time you speak, it's over. Yes, because you never understood the battle that was happening. That's how you were taken. Because if you would have noticed your countenance changed, and you would identify what was trying to get you before you were taken over, you would have came out of it. Mm, that's a good tools for our strategies to know. If I feel my countenance change, hold on. I should be paying attention to myself. Enough to know. Don't sit upon your bed. Right. By the time my countenance changed, that's actually step two because I should have felt the change in the energy. We well, yeah, had started off, remember, about that feeling we have. Right. Mm-hmm. So by the time a countenance well, it's the change. Same. It's the same. The countenance change because your energy shifted. So we got two alarm systems then. They go hand in hand. It's time to go sit down. All right. I'm not sure if everybody knows the scripture, but it says, sit upon that bed. Uh, uh, Stand in awe. Oh. Angry and sin not. Right. <laughs> it's actually two of them. There's one in Psalms, and then there's one in, uh, where's the other one at? I want in the, Ephesians. Ephesians? Okay. Yeah. They probably make a difference now why the scripture was interpreted stand in awe. That's frustration. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Right? But when pride cometh, when that spirit takes you over, you're going to do some sin. Some sin is going to be committed. Whether vocally whether through your actions, whether through your heart, some sin is going to be committed, no matter what. Right? 
When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Because you're shameful because you sin. You have to deal with that shame after. Because you're upset that you sin. You're upset that you fail. But with the lowly is wisdom. So if you stayed in that lowly of heart place and and walking in humility, the Holy Spirit would have done you. He would have delivered you. He would have kept you. A lot of times we fall because the Holy Spirit's not with us through our pride. Hope everybody got it. All right, Alahim, keep you all. I hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. I hope everybody got good edification and that they're growing and they're being built up mentally, spiritually, and ready to put on their armor to fight this battle. All right, keep you all. We love you. Peace and blessings. Peace.